Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Cyberlab, and today will be another video about TrueNAS. Yes, about TrueNAS. In this video I will show how you can install the TrueNAS scale. And that you're gonna ask Alan why you want to show how to install this TrueNAS scale. It's simple. In the previous video I show how you can install the TrueNAS core. Inside this TrueNAS core I show how you can install a virtual machine. And inside this virtual machine you install Debian. Inside this Debian you install Docker. Inside this Docker you install Proxy Manager and other applications to manage better your system. And that's uh, I was thinking it's the best system. No, it's not the best system, but I didn't have other option until some people start to comment, Alan, why you don't install TrueNAS scale? I know that is revision beta or it's not full production, but you can try to install and this application would have Docker. And I look a little bit for this application and it's quite interesting. I will show why it's interesting, but then I decided to install, I work, I like it and that's uh, in this way I come to show for you guys. So. As I told, in this video, we're gonna install TrueNAS Scale. We're gonna go to the basic uh, set up the user, create your first pool, create uh, permissions, and that's it. To avoid this video to be so long, we're gonna stop in a short way, and that in the next video, we're gonna do a full installation. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel, and let's see how can I do it. First thing that we're gonna do is open the website for TrueNAS and have a look in different systems. If I come here in the software, I can open my TrueNAS scale. And at the same time, I will open the second page for TrueNAS Core. You're gonna understand why, but at the moment it's this way. So I can come here and have a look a little bit more for the system. What they promise, that's a hyper covered storage that is scale up and out, integrate Linux containers and virtual machines, Deploy as a single node or a cluster. It means that you can have only one computer or a lot of computer work as a cluster, everything together. Design for hybrid clouds and enterprise support. Operational, it's coming soon. So they don't have support yet for enterprise, different for the TrueNAS core, but you can use it without any problem. So I come here and they give some examples. So you have your virtualization, your servers, your storage network, and your storage system. So they say open hyper covered that scale. So you can have a lot of servers, a lot of uh, network storage, and that everything work as a one and a big system. So I come here, they work with uh, scale out ZFS, basic open ZFS plus the Gluster, that it's a scale system for work with more than uh, one system through the network. Also, you can have your open system work in Linux, and that will have the Docker, Kubernetes, and the KVM work in parallel. Uh, this application is built on open source, so you're not gonna pay anything to install it and run. And that you can manage storage clouds and fear through the internet. Something interesting if you have more than one computer work and you want to see the performance for all of those. So if I come here and come in a fixtures, and here it's the overview for the system. Now I'll open my TrueNAS core fixtures and I have the both overviews. Let's go first from this one and see the difference. What it's really different, it's these extra options that you can have here. So you have the cluster management, so you can have more than one system working. You have the proactive support, and that's uh, these ones will work really similar. From the storage, you have your object, your blocks, and your files that can be a SMB, NFS. You can have a side and all these applications. In order to make it work, they work with a scale out ZFS, where you can configure the same thing as a snapshot clones and replicants, but instead of one system only, you can have a three, four, five and continue on system working parallel. Other thing that it's really different and what's the more important from this system, in my view at least, is this part of Docker and Kubernetes. How they work? They work with Linux container and inside this Linux container, you can have a Docker applications or Kubernetes applications. And in this way, you have um, really lots of applications. If I come here 
you don't have these options. So you have only plugins that's already defined by TrueNAS and Accept and try for TrueNAS. What's the difference? They work, yes, they work exactly the same way. You're not gonna have problem at all. But the difference is that if you use these plugins, you have limitation application. Suppose that you have 20 applications if you are using the TrueNAS core. And if you come here, because you have the Docker, you have over a thousand applications because it's open source, it's easy, and everyone manages better and work better with Docker, in my view. And you can have a specific container saved in specific places, and you can use as a substitute for the OpenVPN without compromise the speed or limitation of performance in this way. Also, if you come for virtualization, you can have the KVM for performance all your virtualizations. And if I come here for the TrueNAR core, you don't have this option. So basically, this is the difference. TrueNAR scale, it's make for scale. You can have a really big system. Also, you have the Docker, that's one of the advanced for this application. So I come here in the TrueNAR scale, and as a difference, I have the roadmap where they will show what basically you can have. So. I have the mood system, the management, the service, the ZFS, iOS, and continue on. So have this one in mind, we're gonna download this system. If I come here and put download, they suggest to have at least a dual core, 64 bits. If you want to run in a Raspberry Pi, at least eight gigabytes of run. Otherwise they will run too slow, but they recommend you to have at least 16 gigabytes. You have a SSD of 16 gigabytes for boot drive and at least two identical storage to avoid that uh, if one hard drive fail, you don't lose all of your data because you have exactly the same copy in another. If you want to have more, then you can make the RAID, RAID 5, RAID 6, and continue. Also, you need to have a network port and have a connection to the internet. You don't need to have a RAID system, but if you want, you, it work quite well as well. So now we can come here and put no thanks, I read download it and do the download. In my case, I can minimize this page and I can open my virtual machine. As I already told, I don't have a capture card, so I cannot uh, record the installation on an external computer. I would like to do it, but I don't have at the moment and don't know when I'm gonna buy it. So I will use uh, this virtual machine only to simulate and show how to install it. I pretend in the next videos to have a proper computer, but in this stage, we're gonna use the virtual machine. So now we're gonna check what configuration that I did in my virtual machine. I come here in settings. The name of the system is Shunas. They work with BSD and uh, the system or version that they run, it's a uh, free BSD at 64 bits. If I come here in system, I have uh, 10 gigabytes of uh, run memory. I have uh, four cores for this system. I habilitate all the extension features so they will allow me to do virtualization for this machine. If I come here in the drives, I have different configuration. First of all, I have my US drive. And the second one, I have my one hard drive that will have all my data. So my first drive will be the 32 gigabytes. And my second one is only 16 gigabytes. The second one I will put as a SSD because I want that uh, run a little bit faster. And because this machine is already running a SSD, so not make any difference. Also already mount my CD here where I have the TrueNAS. Now here in the network, I will put as a bridge adapter because I want to make a bridge for my network and I can put OK. Once that's OK, we can start it and start the installation. So let's put start. Now, first thing they will ask you to choose the option for install. We're gonna put to install and that's uh, they will appear the first page for you in start to do this installation. So let's wait a little bit until they read all the information. Remember, if you're gonna install in a physical computer, I suggest you to get a flash drive. In this flash drive, using Balena Edge, you're gonna flash this flash drive, put in your computer and run it. You can run in a USB. Yes, you can run the TrueNAS in USB, but it's not recommended because it's not stable. Why it's not stable? Because normally flash drive tends to fail more often as well. If you are outside and by mistake you punch it, disconnect it, your system starts to work. So they say, use a, a, a SATA or a SAS connection and continue on. Let's start the installation. So we put install. So now we need to decide which hard drive that I want to install. In my case, I will use this hard drive of 32 gigabytes and put enter. Now they ask 
Now they warn you. This hard drive will be erased and all the information will be lost. Also, you cannot use the SCDA or that hard drive of 32 GB to share data. They will be only the US. And the last, as I told, install on a SATA, SAS, MVME flash media is recommended. USB flash drive stick, it's, uh, it's encouraged exactly because it's not stable. Now we're gonna define the root password. So I suggest you to put a strong password for you. Otherwise, anyone can access your system. When I come here, okay. Now is the stage that you will start to do the installation. This installation will take around five or six minutes. So let's wait to finish this installation. And after this, we can continue to do our configuration. Okay, once that appears this page, it means that your TrueNAS has been installed. So the next step, you need to remove your media and restart your system. So let's do it now. Okay, I just removed my media and I can come here and put okay. Now I can put reboot the system and that my system will shut down and restart. Now this stage, they already appear as a TrueNAS scale. I can put enter and they will take a little bit until they do the first startup. This startup will take uh, uh, time to do all the certification and guarantee that everything is worth as expected. So let's wait. Once that appear, which IP address that I can use, we can start to access uh, through the web UI our true NAS scale. So let's wait. Once that appear this page, I can access my system through the IP address 192.168.1.254. So let's do it. And the first time that you access, or any time that you access, will show this page, true NAS scale. So now we can look in as a root and put our password. And wonderful, we are in the true NAS scale. If I come here, put get start, and now I have my system here, where is true NAS scale, 2002RC2, they work as a true NAS local, and they just start one minute ago. Because I don't have a specific TrueNAS system, they will appear as a generic. In my system, I have my CPU, and in this CPU, I have four cores dedicated for my TrueNAS. As I told, I have 10 GB of run, and here I have no pulse, and my network, it's a 1000 MB connection. So I can come here and put storage. First thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna create our storage in order to be able to access it with our user or create an application. So I put create a pool. Now in this pool, I will put name as a local. I can define any name and then I can click here and put next. What they tell, if you have only one hard drive, you have the risk to lose all your data because you don't have any parity and or any kind of security. So for my installation, it's totally fine. I can come here and force it. I can put confirm, continue, and create. It's not recommended to do it, but in my case, only because I'm using a virtual machine, it's totally fine. I can confirm and create my pool. This pool will take some seconds until they finish, so let's wait. So now my pool has been created. I can create a share. No, because I don't have data set. So let's come here and create a new data set. To do it, it's add a data set. I will define the name, will be data. Comments I can put, yes, I can put, I can define what kind of sync, compression, and continue on, but I will leave as a standard. And I come here and put save. Now I have my first data set. And you're gonna ask, Alan, what's this data set? This data set is basically my share folder, what I can access it externally. Before I create my share folder again, I will create my user to be able to access it. So I come here in credential, local user. All right, I have my root crate. They say that uh, use its height. Okay, no problem, I will create it. So I put add. In that, I will create an enormous of my user, Sauber. Create my user, add Sauber. I will create my password. And my password again. Here I can define my UID and other informations. And now I can come here and put save. Wonderful, I just create my user. Now I can come here my storage. I can come here my data set and view permissions. So in this case, my root have permission for read, write and execute. My root have read and write and others have only read and execute. Let's change a little bit. I come here and edit. So I select my user as a sour. I want that they will read write and execute it. 
I can put apply for permissions, confirm and apply for all the child database and put save. Once that is safe, now this user have permission to access it. So I can come here in my shares and now I can activate my SMB. To do it, I will put add. I'll select what folder that I want to enable in my SMB. So I'll put here data and put save. Now I need to enable this service and okay. Now I already have access for this SMB and I can access and run the way that I want. So next step, I can come here in my app. They will ask which pool that you want to install your application. So I'll define as a local and choose it. And now they are processing all the catalog. If I come here in my task, they are showing what they are processing. They will take some minutes until they finish the load. So I hope you guys like this video. As I told, this video will be only the basics. In the next video, we'll go a little bit more deep how to install the Docker applications, how to extend your libraries and other things that you can do with this new TrueNAS scale. So if you like this video and think that was interesting, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel. See you next time.